Hey, so what is Intel on? So uh, years ago, there was a staple in the developer community. It was called the Intel Developer Forum or IDF. I think I had personally been to 20 of them uh, before as a, as a vendor and as an analyst. But uh, uh, with Pat Gelsinger uh, coming back uh, on the scene, he thought it was very important for uh, to reach out to developers. And these are uh, software developers, these are, these are hardware developers, these are customers, anybody who builds on the uh, the Intel platform. I think what I wanna do is, is, is hit some of the hard news, but I, I, I need some time to look at what they did in software and their for-profit cloud services uh, that they brought up. But I, I will do that later, I'm just not gonna do this uh, right now. So. Uh, first and foremost, Moore's Law, Intel says is alive as well. And Pat Gelsinger, you know, in uh, the keynote, doubled down on five nodes in four, not five, I was mistaken, four years, right? Thank you, Daniel, for uh, correcting me uh, on that. And they must feel very, very confident to, to double down uh, on that. Uh, Pat told me some things in, in our NDA meeting that I can't share, but he definitely gave, gave me confidence uh, in that. And quite frankly, he's not in a position right now to, um, to say things that don't come true uh, uh, because of the push out of Sapphire Rapids. And by the way, that was another thing. I, I got the best explanation of what happened in Sapphire Rapids and and let me just say that it's a complex design. Uh, that design was locked in basically six years ago. So there really isn't a whole lot that Pat could do and come in and redirect unless you had a massive year push out. So, you know, I'm going to give him a mulligan on that one and put it under, uh, not under his watch. Um, sure. I've, been, I've been pretty harsh on the company uh, for that because you know, Pat came in and and talked about a a culture of accountability and execution, and I did appreciate him s telling me the fifteen things that he was either ahead of schedule on, or or meeting schedule. Big announcement: the Intel Arc A seven seventy consumer gaming GPU. Some people said it was never going to happen. It was going to get canceled. Well, guess what? It, it's coming out. It's going to be available in October, and it's three hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Which, by the way, is a head exploder. Now it is a hardcore mid-range, probably aligns more with the Nvidia uh, thirty sixty. Uh, but still, uh, for your first out, top of the stack graphics card, and I will do a victory lap here. Two and a half years ago, in my first article. When they announced this, I said it would be a strong mid-range. People are like, Pat, you don't like Intel. I'm like, no, I'm realistic. When have you seen a first out architecture be industry leading? Never. So uh, I also factored in one three-month slip, which uh, was there. And I also factored in, uh, in uh, AMD and NVIDIA's new architectures. Uh, the final thing, and I know I'm sucking a lot of oxygen out of the room, but it was an exciting event. Uh, Intel Raptor Lake. It's so funny. Pat got up and said, well, of course we were going to announce this here. And I was like, I was surprised. I, I thought it was going to be uh, some sort of a, not a paper launch, but more of a press release, press release launch more at the end of, end of October. But they said it's the best gaming and media desktop processor out there. 24 cores, up to 15% uh, percent ST performance improvement up to 41% multi-thread. And it's fun to see how those e-cores are helping it uh, in the multi-threaded um, applications. Uh, because when you think of e-core, you think of low performance. But these e-cores, which by the way, are about 25% of the size of the P-cores, you can put a, put a ton of those on top uh, on, your, on your die and get really good you know, media transcoding uh, performance very clever who uh, who came up with this but I'll leave it at there it was a good event net net my confidence on Intel is higher than it was much higher than it was when uh, when I came in well 
like you said, I mean, the skeptics are out there. Intel is in a uh, battle with the world right now to make sure that the world believes that it can execute on its vision. Now, I tend to believe that the uh, criticism has probably been a little bit overdone at this point. But again, this kind of comes back to the general, more skeptical nature of the market right now. But again, Intel didn't get any real support even when things were, the bubble was exploding. Um, you know, I thought, Pat, you know, we had a, a really great NDA session, so I can't say much about it, but I feel more informed now after having some time with CEO Pat Gelsinger about some of the things that I was curious about. I feel a little bit more optimistic. Um, in terms of the announcements themselves, you, you did cover a lot of the ground. I think it's, first of all, great. I want to say this on a macro. It's great that Intel is, is refocusing on the developer. The fact that it had sort of gone away from its developer forum, I think, was a mistake. Totally. Um, it was something that enabled companies like NVIDIA that got very focused on developers to actually win. And the AI battle kind of got lost by getting away from that developer ecosystem in an era where the developer is everything for building AI applications. Um, I like Getty, you know, this kind of computer vision technology, simple coding. I mean, they brought a they brought a child on stage. I mean, honestly, she's 18. I mean, she's an adult legally, but amazing. Child. Okay, I have a kid that's multiple years older that is at least 50 years educationally behind this girl. She was brilliant, super smart, but they are building tools, technology for the AI developer to, that has a little bit of a knack to be able to build tools and technologies that work. Love the Chipotle demo. Um, the ability to do something just as simple as using a camera to identify uh, what needs to be, uh, how much, how many tomatoes or guacamole needs to be uh, prepared and ready and, and how much they're going through so they can optimize inventory. These are great utilizations of edge AI applications that can be done right now and Intel has the technology to do it. And I like that they showed a real pragmatic example. Um, the GPUs, Pat, look, this is a huge opportunity for Intel. It, execution, execution, execution. This is gonna be, can they execute? You and I always say on the show, three is the best number. Three yep. real competitors in any market well, for a long time in the GPU space, it's really been two. So Intel is now entering both at an enterprise or data center and as well in the uh, you know PC gaming and workstation with a GPU solution, and they're going to build it out. If they can gain some market share, this is a growth area. It would also be, you know, Pat, I said this uh, in some of the, the conversations we had, Intel has never shown a lot of chops at market taking. Um, those have done really well at market taking from Intel. Can Intel now right. come in to be a market taker? Can they go in and get some of this graphics business um, and, and actually grab it from the competition, uh, which maybe has shown some vulnerability or maybe become a little bit arrogant during a period of time where it's been somewhat easy. Um, so, you know, those are the big things. I mean, the developer cloud is interesting. I need to spend a little more time getting underneath the hood there. Um, you know, Pat's five and four, again, all about execution. I'm cheering for them. I'm cheering for Intel to do well. It's good for the U.S. It's good for the world. Uh, we need the competition. And we need, by the way, uh, them to succeed in their process so they can exceed, succeed in their foundry, which are going to be you know, closely tied together, um, that they're going to be able to do both, all the way down to both their own processes and then, of course, building on ARM, um, RISC-V, and other processes down the line. 